Hi, hello my dears. Welcome, Welcome back, back to English class. Today, I'm going to play a video. Listen to it. Watch the scenes and listen to the song. Okay, ready? Listen here. Kamputare, manasuru kamputare, mannaringe pani eduttu, unne ramputare. Manorukam kutare, manasurukam kutare, manaringe pani edut, munne ram kutare, munne ram kutare. Vidachu nedi anadi du, koi du nedi anadi du, manaringe pani edut, munne ram kutare. Vidachu nedi. different stages of paddy cultivation and did you like the song oh it's a very beautiful song because it tells us that we should preserve our earth preserve our trees and we should plant more trees and we should preserve them too okay and when you eat a mouthful of rice it has a lot of effort by a lot of people from different walks of life. So remember when you have your dinner or have your lunch or have your breakfast. Remember that so many people have worked hard to bring you that mouthful of rice or mouthful of dosha or idli or something. Anyway. So that is the effort, that is the result of the efforts of so many people. And 
What do you think about the job farming? And we feel that doctors, engineers and IAS officers are the most prestigious jobs in the world. Do you think like that? No, no dears. They are, surely they are prestigious jobs. But they are not the only prestigious jobs. There are, there are so many other jobs also. And farming is the first and the foremost respectful, prestigious job in the world. Do you agree with me? Yes, you should. <laughs> because they farmers are giving us our food. Think that there are no farmers. There are teachers, there are doctors, engineers and IAS officers and other uh, very prestigious jobs. Think about that. How will you get your food? <laughs> we don't get our food without farmers. So, farming is a prestigious job and farmers should be respected. You should, we should respect the farmers because they bring us food. They sustain our lives. And in our textbook, English textbook, there's a poem named Sova, which tells us about a farmer, a Sova. Shall we read the poem? Are you ready? Yes, open your textbook at the page number 106. 106. There is the palm. Okay, shall we read it? Yes, look at the lines. Yes, this, this is the palm, the, the saw. Written, written by Victor Hugo. About 200 years before. 200 years ago. Victor Hugo, a French poet. And it's originally written by, written in, originally the poem is written in French. The language French and it's translated into English by Toru Dutt, a Bengali poet and translator. Toru Dutt. The Sova. What's the title of the poem? The Sova. Shall we read it? Listen. Look at the text. Look at the lines. Sitting in a postway coal. Fades the release and light fast to light hastens on to roll. Working hours are well nigh past. Shadows shoot across the lands, but one sower lingers still. All in rags he patience stands. Looking on, I feel a thrill. Black and high. His loud dominates the furrows deep. Now to sow the task is set. Soon shall come a time to reap. Marches he along the plain to and fro and scatters wide from his hands the precious grain. Modi, I to see him strive. Darkness deepens Got the light. Now his gestures to mine eyes are august and strange. His height seems to touch the starry skies. Only one, two, three, four, and five stanzas. The palm sower has only five stanzas. Okay. Let's analyze the poem. Detail. Okay, ready. First stanza. Sitting in a postway cool, fades the ready sunlight fast. Twilight hastens on to roll. Working hours are well nigh past. So, the poet is speaking here. In this poem, the speaker is the poet himself. So, the poet is sitting in a postway cool. What do you mean by sitting in a postway cool? 
Understand? The meaning is while I am sitting in a cool porch way. Really, this is the sentence. But in the poem, the line is sitting in a porch way cool. That is the freedom of a poet. A poet can reverse the word order, change the word order. No problem. We can understand that. So, sitting in a posh way cool. What is the real sentence? While I am sitting in a cool posh way. Cool, you know. Posh way. What do you mean by posh way? Posh way means sitting room or draw, drawing room. And in Malayalam, we can say padipura. That is. Look here. Look at this picture. A man is sitting in the porch and looking at the field, at the mountains, at the trees, etc. So this is. So where is the uh, speaker uh, sitting? Or, or in the, at the, the front, front of his house. Pause. Face the ready sunlight fast. Here also there is a change in the word order. Let's look what is the correct word order. Okay. The red colored sunlight fades away fast. The sunlight fades fast. The ready sunlight fades fast. What it means? The red colored sunlight fades away fast. Fades away. Wouldn't be fade. Fades. Mangi poga. The sunlight fades. Ready. Wouldn't be ready. Bloody. Bloody, what is the color of blood? Oh, you know, red. So, bloody means ready. Ready means in red color. Look, this is the ready sunlight. Ready sunlight. Twilight hastens on to roll. Twilight. What do you mean, twilight? Listen, this is a twilight. And uh, look at the sky. You can see the moon and some stars dimly. We can't see them clearly. The sight is dim. And look at the horizon. What do you see? A yellow light horizon. Yellow color horizon. So the sun has set but it is not night. That time is known as twilight. Sayandanam, we can see. So this is the twilight. The yellow colored light lingers in that sky. And we can see the stars and the moon in a dim way, dimly. So that is the time twilight. Okay. Twilight hastens on to roll. Hastens. What do you mean by hasten? Hasten means quick to do something. Do uh, something in a uh, rush, in a quick way. That is hasten. So, twilight hastens on to roll. So, twilight is coming in a uh, coming fast to roll. Rule? What do you mean by rule? Rule means take control. Control. So here, the twilight is controlling the day now. Uh, during the day hours, the light is controlling the earth. But now, who is going to control the earth? Twilight. Darkness. So twilight hastens on to roll. Working hours are well nigh past. Working hours. What is the working hours? And tell me, what is your working hours? Yes, from 9.30 to 3.30. That is your working hours. And everyone's working hours. Or 10 to 5. So that is the working hours. And here, the working hours are well nigh past. What that means? Well nigh. What do you mean by well nigh? Well nigh means almost. Almost. Edand. Almost. 
So the working hours are well nigh past. Past. It has gone. The working hours have have gone. Working hours have gone. So now it is dark and it is not the working hours. That is the point. Working hours are well nigh past. Next answer. Shadows shoot across the lands, but one saw a link still. Old in rags, he patient stands. Shadows shoot across the lands. Shadows, you know shadows. Here, we can say the darkness. Here shadows means darkness. And there is only two light, an yellow colored light. So there are shadows. And have you ever gone out in the twilight? If not, tomorrow itself, go out of your house in the twilight, in the evening, when the sun has set, but there is a light. And look, at, look around you. You can see shadows shoot across the lands. Okay, so do it. Shadows shoot across the lands, but one sower lingers still. In the field, one sower, look at the, look at the picture. One sower lingers still. Lingers. What do you mean by lingers? Lingers means stay in a place longer than necessary because of a reluctance to live. Stay somewhere. Why? You don't want to go away. If you go to a park, a water theme park like a happy land or vega land, do you want to go away? Go out of the park? No. You don't want to go away from that place. So you lingers there. You lingers there. You don't want to go away. So what do you mean lingers? Stay in a place longer than necessary because of a reluctance to live. Reluctance is the case. Sammadha milayma. A reluctance to live. Okay. So a sower, a farmer is still there in the field. He doesn't want to go away from the field. He, the farmer, doesn't want to go away from the field. But one sower lingers still. Old, in rags, he patient stands. Look at the line once more. Old, in rags, he patient stands. <laughs> there is a change in the word order. And what is the meaning of that sentence, that line? He is old and he wears old worn out clothes. He stands there patiently, patiently, without any rush, without any hurry. He, he is standing there patiently. He is old and his dress is rags. Rag, what do you mean rag? Rag means old, worn out cloth. Worn out, pinji poya. Paragi pinji poya. Dwaramena kiri poya. Old, worn out cloth. Old in rags, he patient stands. She, he stands there patiently. Uh, he, do, he doesn't want to go away from the field and he is not in a hurry. So he is uh, lingering there. Looking on, I feel a thrill. And the point is looking, looking at the field from his portrait. And the point is sitting in his portrait. In a surely manner. He is very comfortable. The point is very comfortable. But what about the farmer? Look, let us see what is he doing. And before that, the poet feels a thrill. Thrill? Thrilling. 
But you know, thrilling. Ah, oh, that is the meaning. Thrilling. You know. Okay. Third stanza. Black can hide his silhouette dominates the furrow's babe. Now to sow the task is set. Soon shall come a time to rape. Black can hide his silhouette. Silhouette. Black and high. High? You know, high. Okay. Black can high his silhouette. Look at this word. Silhouette. Once more. Silhouette. Once more, please. When you when we see the spelling, we may read it in some other way. But the pronunciation is seal out. Once more, please. Seal out. Okay. Wouldn't be seal out. The dark shape and outline of someone or something visible in a restricted light against a brighter background. That is seal out. Look here. Listen to this picture. Look at this picture. It is dark in color. And the background is white. A bright background. The dark picture. That is the outline. Only the outline. This is silhouette. So when you hear the word silhouette, you should remember this picture. This is the silhouette. This type of pictures is seal out. It is a drawing. But here, in this poem, this is the seal out. Can, Can you see, see the shadow? shadow? This, this is, is the seal out here. Okay. So black and high, his seal out dominates the pharaoh's deep. Pharaoh's. What do you mean pharaoh's? So this is the pharaoh's. This top part, here is the plants and this lower part, this is the furrows. In a field, we can see furrows. Okay, so this is furrows. His silhouette dominates the furrows deep. Dominates, we are not going to do that. Dominates. Dominates the furrows deep. Now to sow the task is set, soon shall come a time to reap. Now to sow the task is set. Now to sow the task is set. And here also is a change in the word order. What is the correct word order? Can anyone tell me? What is the correct word order? Now to sow the task is set. Okay, this is the correct word order. Now, the task to sow is set. And I told you, this is the freedom of a poet. He can use, he or she can use the words in different way. Then, uh, the meaning of that or emphasis of that meaning become greater. The importance. That's why the poet uses a different word order. Okay, now the task to sow is set. So, we take it up. Now the task to sow is set. So, what is the uh, farmer doing? Look here, what is the farmer doing? Sowing. Sowing the seeds. And soon shall come a time to reap. Reap koyuga. So, reap. And have you heard this Malayalam lines? Sambatta karatu, taibatta vechan, abatta karatu, kapatta dina. Sambatta karatu, taibatta vechan, abatta karatu, kapatta dina. Now, what are you? Namukku, sambatta ula pola, namukku kari ula pola, arugi ula pola, namal kari ula chedal, namukku abatta vechan samayetu, so here, what is the, these lines means? 
Now to sow the task is set. Soon shall come a time to reap. So that is the meaning. Namal nanmal chilal, namka nanma tirichiridam. Namal vidakinada nalle vidakinadangil, adirinola nalle bhalangal, adirinola nalle vilava namukle vidakinada. Namal vidakinada padirangil, vilava vidakinada. ஜீவிதம் You sow, so shall you reap. That is the uh, proverb. Vidakkinnade kuyullu. So here, the sower, the farmer is sowing the seeds. And there will come a time to reap. Reap the product, that is. So next answer. Marches he along the plain. To and fro and scatters wild from his hands the precious grain. Modi, I to see him stride. Marches he along the plain to and fro. He marches to and fro and scatters wild from his hands the precious grain. Modi, I to see him stride. Look at the lines. Marches he along the plain to and fro and scatters wild from his hands the precious grain. And we can say that he marches to and fro along the plain and scatters the precious grain in his hands wild. So what is the uh, sower, the farmer doing? He is sowing the seeds, scattering. What do you mean scattering? Vidarga. Scattering the precious grain in his hands. Precious grain. What do you mean precious? Don't you remember um, in a lesson, in the poem Tash Mahal, we saw the precious stones. In the Nila, Maradaga, Manikyam. Don't you remember? So they are very precious, of high worth or high cost. Level every pulla, precious, amulya mayava. So what is precious here? Look at the line. What is precious? Precious grain, grain, dhanya manival. Why? Why grain is precious? Do you think grain is precious? And there are precious stones. They are precious because they, they have high cost. Are grains precious? Yes, sure. Grains are precious. Precious than the precious stones. <laughs> Why? We can't eat those stones. Are they precious then? Then, if you get a handful of rice, which is precious, 500 uh, rubies or 500 uh, emeralds or a handful of rice, which is precious? Tell me. <laughs> sure, the grains are precious. So that's why it is said that the, he scatters the precious grain. Food is the most important thing. Money is not precious. Not such precious. Nothing more. Not anything. Or nothing is more precious than food. So grains are the precious thing. That's why Victor Hugo says that the, he scatters Precious grain. Moody, I to see him stride. I 
I become moody to see him strive. Or what do you mean by moody? Moody. What do you mean by moody? Here, moody means thoughtful. The real meaning of moody is gloomy. Aage anga gloomy avuga. Or maunatre kya avuga. But here, it means I become thoughtful. Thoughtful. What do you mean by thoughtful? Yeah, I am thinking. I am thinking about. Thinking about the farmer. So, moody here means thoughtful. And what do you mean by stride? Stride means walk with long steps. Walk with long steps. So, the farmer is walking. Walking with long steps. Long steps means? And you know, uh, we can uh, walk with short steps. And we can uh, walk with long step. That is. So, stride. Moody, I to say him stride. When I see him walk with long steps, I become thoughtful. I becomes, I become thoughtful. Okay. So, I am thinking, when I saw him scattering the precious grains. Okay. Last answer. Darkness depends. Gone the light. Now his gestures to my eyes are august and strange. His height seems to touch the starry skies. Darkness depends. Depends. Thickness. Darkness become thick. From to light. Now it is very dark. What will be darkness depends? It become very dark. Gone the light. Now there is no light. Gone the light. Now his gestures to my eyes are august. Now his gestures. Gestures? What will be gestures? Gestures means Movement of hands or body. When we talk, we, we make gestures. Very normally, we make gestures. Don't we? When you call someone, hey, come here. <laughs> we uh, do the gestures with our hands. Come here, this gesture. Don't you? Yes, sure. Because in the uh, uh, early days, in very, very, very early days of human beings, there is no language. They are gesturing. Only sign language, gestures. From that, the language developed. So, when we use a language, we use gestures too. That is the point here. Every time you listen to yourself, every time you speak something, there should be some gestures. And look at me. I am also making gestures. And and I? Yes, sure. I am also making gestures with my hands, with my head, with my whole body also. When I am in front of you in the class, I am making the gestures with all with my whole body also. So here, what do you mean by gestures? Movement of hands or body. Okay. So now his gestures to my eyes. My eyes, in me, his gestures are august and strange. August. August. What do you mean august? August. Here is the stress. J. August. Gust is the stress, the syllable here. August. August. What do you mean august? And you know the august. And august, the month, august. But that is August, August, O, O is the stressed syllable here, August, but here, gust, August, August, so what will be August, it means respected and impressive, it is not the month of August, month of August, August, here it is August, August. What it means? 
റെസ്പെക്റ്റഡ് ആൻഡ് ഇംപ്രസീവ് നമുക്ക് ബഹുമാനം തോന്നുന്ന നമ്മളെ ആകർഷിക്കുന്ന ഫാമാർ I felt respect towards the farmer and now his gestures to my eyes are august and strange strange vijitram no other person is in the field in at that night working hours are uh, past it is not a working hour and no one is there in the field but one farmer what is he doing he is scattering the seeds the precious grains and seeing that the poet felt respect towards the farmer that is the point here now his gestures to my eyes are august and strange gestures the gestures here means the scattering of the seeds the scattering of the seeds okay now his gestures to my eyes are august and strange his height seems to touch the starry skies his height adehathinte uyaram seems to touch the starry skies seems to what do you mean seems to seems to feel like it may not be real enik angane thoni feel like seems to means feel like angane thonuga it may not be real satyam aganam enonnu illa enik angane thonunu seems to seems to be here his height seems to touch the starry skies starry sky sky with so many stars what is this starry sky sky with so many stars have you seen a starry sky if not go out of your house and look at the sky you can see a starry sky so beautiful full of stars twinkling in the sky and there may be a moon so look at the star look at the sky it was a very beautiful it is not was it is a beautiful sight okay so here the poet feels that the man touches the sky what it means it means that uh, the poet feels much respect to the person in his mind in the poet's mind the man becomes a respectful person a very very respectful person that is his height seems to touch the starry skies when the poem starts uh, what does the poet say about the person the sower do you remember old in rags he patient stands old in rags he was an old person wearing worn out clothes rags but at the end what is he uh, telling about the person his height seems to touch the starry skies so he feels respect towards the farmer and do you remember what i told you in the beginning a farmer is the very respectful person in the world on earth and farming is the most respectful prestigious job in the world the poet realizes that truth a farmer a farmer is the most prestigious person a most respectful person 
and a farmer is working after the working hours working after the working hours even in the darkness even in the night so he he doesn't like to go away from his field he loves his field that is the point he loves his job he loves his work and have you uh, seen others who are working after the working hours your teachers don't they working after the working hours are they just working from 9:30 to 3:30 what do you think and your mother your father and some of them also are working after the working hours so if we love our work we may work after the working hours too so love your work then your work will be a great thing for you and uh, when you work it will benefit others too if you work for yourself only that may not be a good thing that is not a good thing that is so when you work work for others too here the farmer is working is he working for himself no surely not he is working for others too is she is he going to eat all the uh, all the grain he is producing no really we are eating the grains he is producing so he is working for others too that's why he loves his job so much okay so this is the last stanza of the poem let's read the poem once more listen to it look at the stanzas sitting in a pathway cool fades the ruddy sunlight fast to light hastens on to roll walking hours are well night past shadows shoot across the lands but one saw a link horse till old in rags he patient stands looking on i feel a thrill black and high his loud dominates the furrows deep now to sow the task he set soon shall come a time to reap marches he along the plain to and fro and scatters wide from his hands the precious grain moody i to see him stride darkness deepens gone the light now his gestures to my eyes are august and strange his height seems to touch the starry skies and this is the torudat who translated the french poem into english torudat and really the poem sower is an appreciation of the hard work of a farmer just an appreciation an appreciation poem of the hard work of a farmer in the last class uh, we wrote appreciation letter letter of appreciation don't you remember and here the poet has written a poem to appreciate the farmer and what is the farmer doing he is working more than working hours that's why the poet is appreciating the farmer he is working more than working hours okay don't forget to uh, read the poem the three times at home two times silently and one time loudly aloud okay so see you in the class till then bye bye